Born in Christ Church, and all of you who found this podcast this morning. I am Reverend Jesse Brown, the preacher of the day, and Mr. Glenn Bryant is our musician. We welcome you and glad that you found this morning's meditation. But we also want to invite you to join us for in-person worship every Sunday at 12 a.m. Or you can get here at 11. We have our praise and prayer group going on at 11.30 here at uh, Christ Church. And we're located at 30th and Diamond at Ridge Avenue in Philadelphia. But let us take a moment as we prepare ourselves for worship with this prayer. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary, without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and the people in God's church said, Amen. Amen. This morning's meditation is drawn from Luke, the 21st chapter, beginning with the 5th verse. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for what these things you see, the days will come when not, when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, but these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful potentates and great signs from heaven. But before all of this occurs, they will attest, uh, they will arrest that you, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will, be given you, this will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will perish. By your, by your endurance, you will, be, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. I know it feels kind of strange because the word is, is in some ways is a contradiction to itself where it says Jesus is telling us be ready for these things that are going to happen. They're going to persecute you. Some of you are going to get killed all because of me. Be ready for those times. These great and glorious edifices we call churches there will come a time when not a stone will be standing upon another stone. These buildings will not be here. So get ready for those times. You will know that these times are coming because of the insurrections, because of the earthquakes, because of the nations going to war against nations. You will know that the end is near. Get ready. This 
is a powerful message. Because it's telling us that everything's not going to be okay. And of course, if we know as long as we're here on earth with these human beings and with other people, nothing is ever okay. Somebody's always trying to get the upper hand. Someone's always trying to uh, uh, control all of the resources. Somebody wants that power. Somebody else wants to take that power. There's always going to be people who are in conflict with one another, so we need to be ready. I would like to be able to tell you today that all of our problems are going to disappear, but Jesus reminded us that's not going to happen. We need to be ready. The one sure thing, however, that Jesus promised is that we stay faithful and true to the witness and word of God. And if we do that, whether we live or whether we die, we will still have our place that has been assured by God. That if we ungird ourselves with truth and justice, then we will have done the best that we can do. It's difficult to take that in because it requires a discipline in us. The same kind of discipline Jesus needed to complete his mission. You remember what happened to Jesus, don't you? I know you were there in Jerusalem waving the palm branches saying, Hosanna to the highest. It was a party that day. Some of you got to sit in the upper room with Jesus as he was breaking bread with his disciples on that evening. Just before the soldiers came just before they arrested Jesus. And in their kangaroo court, it, they took him to one and said, well, what did he do wrong? And, and he couldn't find anything. And he says, you're trumping up charges. Uh, I can't condemn this man on the basis of that. You've got nothing. And finally, to appease the, the political people around him, he said, hey, you do what you want to with it. They turned their back on justice. They closed their eyes to truth. And they hung Jesus on the cross. But even when they did that, you see, Jesus had already told them that on the third day, he was going to rise again. Mm -hmm. He had already told them that these things must take place. He even stopped Brother Peter from causing any other conflict. Remember, he drew his sword and cut off the ear of the soldier, and, he, and Jesus healed that soldier and said, put your sword down. These things are going to happen. For the witness of God has to show you that by my death, that God is in charge of both life and death. And that God can fulfill his promises to us, even should we fall. And on the third day, they went to the tomb. They looked in, and there was nobody. On the third day, they went to prepare the, the, the final preparations, but there was nothing to do. On the third day, God showed all of humanity that God's word comes true mm -hmm. in life and in death. Amen. And that's the oh, promise yeah. he's made to us, that any who believe on his name will not perish, but will have everlasting life. That's the power of God working through us, in us, with us, around us. Empowering us to be the witness of justice, of grace, of mercy. Empowering us to do what is right for all of humanity. It 
gives us not only the authority, but the power to make transformations take place. Amen. Amen. This is our call, our charge, our mission, to love our neighbor as ourselves. I hope during this time in your life, in your place, you find that strength God gives you. Because if you rely on your own strength, you're going to fall down. You're going to become weak. If you rely on anything other than the promise of the gospel, then it will fail. But in the end, God will lift you back up. You see, it's not that uh, you worry about falling down. It's whether or not you get up and continue to be that witness. So be that witness in season and out of season. Through this time and through the times that are to come. I pray for you. You pray for me. Amen. 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 It's prayer time. Time to lay our burdens at the cross. It's prayer time. United with the saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for the challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the order and beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles rest and new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal the wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Of whole mental health professionals and those in your care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uniting God, Unite this assembly and all its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of the resurrection and renew life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you. Jesus Christ, our Lord, people in God's church said, Amen and Amen. <laughs>
you here at Christ uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church, 30th Diamond and Ridge. We are thankful that you found this meditation and we welcome you for in-person worship. Mr. Glenn Bryant is our director of music. And again, come, find us, join us, so that we celebrate God's grace for us. Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the people in God's church said, Amen. Amen.